Hello, I'm Colin from We Learn to Share, and today's lecture is the second lecture about electronic structures and the periodic table. Today's lesson is one of the most focused lessons on quantum mechanics. Master Tom's book only deals with their basics, but the additional contents of my lecture may be difficult, so take some time so you can fully understand it. I'll first introduce you the background for quantum mechanics. There are some calculations that need to be done to precisely understand why these cannot be explained by classical mechanics, but we'll just deal with some simple explanations for each. There were four phenomena that could not be explained by quantum mechanics. We talked about three of them, black-body radiation, the photoelectric effect, and the hydrogen atom spectrum in our last lecture. On this class, I'll describe the former two of them more specifically. Let's start with black body radiation. Consider a box filled with monoatomic molecules in thermal equilibrium. In the box, the molecules will have an average energy of 3 over 2 kBT. Using the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, we can obtain the velocity distribution formula and draw a curve during the distribution of molecules. Similarly, in an empty box, heated until thermal radiation occurs. It is possible to draw a distribution curve for the light coming out too. Now, this distribution shows the amount of light for each frequency. The box keeps absorbing light as well as it emits it. When we consider the box as an oscillator that generates light, we can say that the oscillator and the light is exchanging energy. At thermal equilibrium, we can obtain the equilibrium constant and use it to calculate the energy of the oscillator. However, the energy equation obtained in this way of classical mechanics, assuming that the energy level is constant, did not match with experimental values, especially at high frequency. Since the energy equation obtained by Planck, assuming the quantization of energy levels, matched the experimental values accurately, Black body radiation became a background for the creation of quantum mechanics. Next, I'll explain the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is a phenomenon of the electron of metal being released when energy is provided in the form of light. However, this investigation proved that light is not like other waves. There were three factors that could not be explained in the term of waves of classical mechanics. First, the energy of a wave must depend on its amplitude, but the photoelectric effect did not occur, regardless of amplitude in certain frequencies. Second, when the electron is released, it should have connected energy also depending on the amplitude of the light, but it didn't. Third, for a wave to convey work to the electron, time is required, but a photoelectric effect occurred right after the light reached the metal. These three observations let Einstein make up the light quantum theory and get the equation E equals h mu. Using this and another equation E equals pc, Einstein derived the following equation. Now, while Einstein argued that waves or light can behave like particles and it is possible to calculate their momentum, if wrongly change this form into lambda equals h divided by p, and came up with the matter wave theory, which made a point that particles can behave like waves too. The fourth phenomenon, which was not mentioned in the previous lecture, was heat capacity depending on temperature rather than being static. We will not look on this further in this chapter. The quantum mechanical model differ from Bohr's model in these two ways. First, the kinetic energy of an electron is inversely related to the volume of the region where it is confined. Second, the quantum mechanical model states that it is impossible to specify the position or the orbit of an electron. We can only calculate the probability of the electron existing at a certain point. We won't go through mathematical calculation and derive it, but the Schrodinger equation, an important equation of quantum mechanics, 
can be used to calculate the probability of finding the electron at a point. Its solution, psi, is considered as the square root of this probability, according to Born's interpretation. This fact was used to, de to determine the exact function psi x. Now, this is the end of the difficult part, and let's go on to the quantum numbers that are related to the electron of the atom in orbital. The first quantum number, n, mainly determines the energy of an electron. In the energy equation derived from the Schrodinger equation, we can see that En depends on the square of n. Also, since n is a positive integer, we can see that energy is quantized. The principal energy level includes some levels which are indicated by the second quantum number L. The value of L can vary from 0 to n minus 1. L is also called the angular momentum quantum number, and it can be used to calculate the angular momentum of an electron by using this equation. The shape of the electron clouds are determined by L, and as L gets larger, the shape gets more complex. In general, in the n principal level, there are n different sum levels starting from s to p, d, f, and these alphabets can also be used to indicate the sum level. The electrons fill up each sum level from s to f. Each sum level can contain one or more orbital, and this can be indicated by the value assigned to the third quantum number, ml. This quantum number determines the direction of the orbital. ML can have a value from L to minus L, and therefore each sum level of L contains 2L plus 1 orbital. ML can also be used to determine the angular momentum's z axis component, which equals ML times h bar. ML is also called the magnetic quantum number because it determines the direction of the magnetic field generated by the spinning electron. This causes the normal Zeeman effect, or the divergence of the energy peak into 3. The fourth quantum number, ms, is associated with electron spin, and its existence was proved by these four observations. The first was the stern gerlach experiment, where the electrons bombarded through a non-uniform magnetic field split into two directions. The magnetic moment formed by the angular momentum couldn't explain this since it could only explain the splitting into odd numbers. Second, the doublet structure or the splitting of the energy peak into two in experiments provided a similar evidence. Third, the anomalous Zeeman effect, splitting into many peaks instead of three, proved the existence of another quantum number. Fourth, the number of elements per period was 2 times n squared, where the number of 2 implies the existence of two directions of spin. ms has only two values, plus half and minus half, and this determines the direction of the electron's rotation. Orbitals always fill up by a pair of electrons with opposing spins. The reason why the values of ms are all half numbers are because they have to explain the splitting into even numbers. This is the end of today's lecture. It is especially important to understand quantum mechanics since it can be used to interpret many phenomena of chemistry. Next time, we'll go on to the last part of this chapter, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and turn on the notifications.